All right, so it's seven in the morning. I need to go to sleep. I have been working for the past 10 hours, but I wanted to do this video because I've been thinking about it since yesterday. Um, well, actually, since I did my last video on this, on my uh, losing faith, I believe is what the one it was. And I, I wanted to talk about it because it's really, it's a point of contention within religious debate. If you are, you know, a Christian apologist, you've definitely heard this before. Um, if you have argued against a Christian, you've probably used this. If you even watch anyone who talks about Christianity and its its role within secularism, um, you know, you've probably heard about it. You know, if you watch channels like Rationality Rules, Genetic genetically modified skeptic cosmic skeptic those guys i think they've all talked about it and i think uh some christian channels like inspiring philosophy have talked about it i don't know if the bible project has talked about it uh i haven't looked at them in a while anyway i aside from the channels i watch that talk about these sorts of things uh if you don't know the problem of evil is exactly what it sounds like if god is all good um then why is there evil uh, as a Christian, I thought, well, I mean, there's evil there because there needs to be evil for us to have free will. And we need to have free will because God wants us. The only reason for God to create us is to have some creation that loves him genuinely. The reason it can't be the angels is because they don't have free will um, and they have to love him. So it's not like a true love, I guess. Um, so we have we have to have free will because why else would God have made us? Otherwise, we'd be his plaything, and that just didn't seem right to me. There is also a sect of Christianity, a um, denomination called Calvinism, uh, and I th there might be other denominations that don't believe in free will. But the main one that I always heard about was Calvinism. I'll talk about it separately on its own uh, later at a later date. It's really interesting. They have five points, uh, tulip the five points of Calvinism. Um, if you want to look into that, it's really, it's, it's, it's really interesting, but uh, again, I'll go into that in a later date. Point is, not all denominations believe this, and in that case, I have no idea. I genuinely have no possible clue about what <laughs> Calvinists think about the problem of evil. Um, but even aside from that, you know, there's other kinds of evil. There's not just, you know, evil created from people. There's also natural evils, like, um, or things that we would describe as evil. I guess, technically, they're not evil, they're just natural processes. But to us, because they hurt us, they're natural evils. Things like, you know, tornadoes and, and or natural disasters in general, uh, sicknesses and stuff like that. But right now, I, I just want to go into to human-created evils, and then I'll go into the other ones. Um, so, rationality rules, I, I think I touched on them earlier. There, he's a really good channel. He uploads stuff um, arguing. I th I don't know if he's an anti-theist, uh, like um, say Aaron Ra, but he does talk against religion a lot, or specifically Christianity and whatnot. Um, the the major religions. He talks about things that he thinks are messed up in them. Um, he's made a video about the. I think he's made a video about the problem of evil. Anyway, point is, he he has a really good idea on it. I really like the way he phrases it. He says, you're right, and, and, and this is in law, not like, you know, in the Bible. You're right to swing your fist around. Like, you can swing your first fist around all you want, right? You can, you can flail, you can do whatever you want. But as soon as your fist reaches the tip of my nose, your right to swing your fist is gone, right? Your right to swing your fist ends at the tip of my nose. Why couldn't God have put that kind of policy in, in, um... In, I don't know, in... <laughs> why couldn't he use that sort of policy? I'm sorry, my... I couldn't figure out a phrase that. Uh, why... Because there are sins that don't necessarily require hurting another person, right? Because, you know, lying, I guess, is a sin that requires hurting another person. Um, murder, you know, all that. But why did I laugh at that? <laughs> why did I... Oh, no, I didn't mean to... Uh, I'm trying to, like... Okay, shut up. I didn't laugh at that. That didn't happen. Um, point is, why, 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 like, there, 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 there are sins, my gosh, I can't think right now. There are sins that don't necessarily require hurting another person, for instance, um, or don't even require infringing on another person's free will, as it were. 
and that, that's a whole other debate if you believe that secularly, secularly, secular, as a secularist, as someone who isn't Christian, that's a completely separate debate. Um, but there, there are sins that don't infringe on other people's free will. You know, fornication doesn't necessarily have to be rape. Uh, same with adultery, um, or like lust. You can, you can look at a girl, dang, she's cute, I want to sex her up all night <laughs> and without without necessarily infringing on her free will um or or guys you know if you swing that way and i'm down for that <laughs> um like why like those are evils that you can choose right so you can still choose evil without infringing on others free will without murdering you know without torturing without raping like but instead god is like Hmm. You know what? It's a good idea to allow people to do these things that I consider evil. Um, that also, in some way, takes away from free will. Uh, like, again, if the point is free will, if the point of having human-created evil is because free will is a necessity for whatever reason, um, for whatever, for how, whatever it was created for. Again, I can't go into what Calvinists think. I don't know what they think. Um, but, like, why not, you know, create this sort of way? And, actually, I'm, I was going to go into a different argument but, uh, for Christianity, but uh, that's like an end thing that I want to go into. Um, what, was I, what was I saying? Oh yeah, if, if free will is the point, <laughs> um, then why not take away the ability to infringe on others' free will? Um, like, that, that, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> and I feel like if there is a God that is, you know, all-knowing, because I believe the Bible says he's all-knowing, I haven't looked into that in a while, but I'm pretty sure it says that, uh, then what, what possible thought process could he have had to say, yeah, I want, I'm want. i forcing them to have free will, but they can also take away others' free will. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? You know what I mean? And then uh, and then there's the problem of natural evils, sicknesses and whatnot. Uh, and the argument that I would have given uh, when I was Christian, I would say, well, God gave the earth to the devil. Um or Satan, or Lucifer. Interesting side note, I don't know if I mentioned this before, Lucifer isn't actually a name for the Satan that everyone knows of. Uh, Lucifer is actually, when, when I think I think it's David, I don't remember exactly, when whoever it is says Lucifer in the Bible, they're actually referring to a king, because Lucifer is a name of, I believe it's Venus, which is the brightest star, and it's the last one to disappear in the morning, so Lucifer is the son of the morning because it's the last star to fade, but it still does fade, so he was referring to the king as fading. Anyway, <laughs> side tangent. Uh, God gave the world and people in general over to Satan. For us to be saved, you know, we have to go to God or whatever, which, you know, Calvinists think of, uh, think of it differently. I'll go into that in another video again. I, I need to keep mental note of all these things. Um, but because the world is Satan's, we can get sick and there are natural disasters but what i don't understand about that in job god has to give express permission to satan who keep in mind isn't you know devil horns and pointy tail and trident or whatever or pitchfork um standing in fire in, in this in this scenario in job specifically the satan the one that everyone thinks of when they think satan is actually on what's called the Divine Council, I believe, and he's and he's like not necessarily advising God, but like talking to God, being like, "Hey, this guy," or no, God was bragging about Job, like, "Yo, this guy, this guy would never curse me." And then Job's like, "Oh," yeah, or and then Satan's like, "Oh yeah, watch this," but God had to give him permission. So why would God not have to give him permission? now <laughs> why would I'm, i want to do a, a video about job i'm just stacking these up i want to do a video on samson too <laughs> those are both really interesting anyway um the natural disasters like and let's let's say 
that it was after Job, or Job was just a parable, and it was just like, oh yeah, this is what God said about the entire world, or whatever. Because a lot of people, a lot of scholars do think that Job was a parable, not an actual thing that happened, because uh, all the people, all his friends talk in poem, and all that. Um, so now, do, the Satan does have rule over the world, and he can do all these things to make people curse God, or whatever. Why would God give him that ability? Right? Because obviously, God doesn't trust the entire world. <laughs> he flooded it once for, for, ironically, for God's sake. <laughs> um, so, I, I like, that's not a valid argument. I might be straw manning. I'm sorry if I am. Uh, that's not my intent. I'm just trying to, I'm really, honestly, just trying to think the best rationalization that I can for this thing. Uh, but let's say, but again, you know, we're, we're going into hypotheticals. Why would God give the world over to Satan? Supposedly, to my knowledge, it's because Adam and Eve ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is a mouthful of a name, by the way. <laughs> they ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God was like, oh, you sinned, oh, you sinned, guys, now you and all of your children and your their children and their children and so on are all cursed forever, good job. <laughs> Which, stupid decision. Um, generational curses, kind of dumb, let's be honest. Because the kids didn't do anything. Uh, and it's not like Adam and Eve controlled the entire world. I mean, I guess technically they kind of did, depending on how you want to look at it. But again, their children did nothing. It just doesn't make sense to me personally, uh, and I don't think anyone can justify that to me, that God gave, gave the world over to Satan. Um, he, like, even if even if the Bible says he did, like, why? It's just not rational. Um, and speaking of Job, this is the end game, this is the end thing, end game thing? I don't know why I said end game. This is the end thing that I was, that I was talking about earlier, the, the ultimate argument. Uh, at the end of Job, God's like, yo, you know what, you know what, Job? I killed a giant fish. <laughs> That's, those aren't the, the words. He's like, I, I killed Leviathan. You couldn't do that. I know better than you because I killed Leviathan. And again, I'm not going to Job on its own later. But like... God knows better than us, and that, that's that's the that's the point of Job. God knows better than us, and he made the things the way he did, and we shouldn't question him. And that is a disgusting way of thinking. Question everything, all right? Question everything, because if you don't, you could fall into a bad thing very easily. Um, but even outside of how toxic it is, I am questioning it. That's the problem. <laughs> and, it's not very rational, and you don't. I can't see any way to rationalize it, um, and I don't know of anyone who can find a way to rationalize it. And th this is this is a this is an argument. Argument problem of evil. The problem of evil is not something that changes many people's minds because they're already so set in stone in what they believe. But if you are questioning your faith, and I said at the beginning of the last videos that my intent in this wasn't to make you question your faith. I'm not necessarily rescinding that, I'm not exactly trying to make you question your faith if you are Christian, but I want you to, I do think it's very healthy to think about these things, and don't be afraid to change. It's difficult, it's scary, I know, but don't be afraid to question things. It doesn't matter what, you know, a book says, you should question it. And I know you might not believe that that's necessarily the case, but if, if I'm making you question your faith, I, you should look into it, you know? At least a little bit. Um, I don't expect this specific video to change anyone's faith, but it might, it might be the diving board, for lack of better terms. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have much more to go into. I just think it's a really interesting concept, the problem of evil. Um, I think it's really interesting to talk about. So thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed talking about it. Um, I don't know how to end this. Oh, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. I don't know how to end this.